Hello, this video is on maxillary anterior phrenectomies. Typically, phrenectomies are performed on maxillary anterior and mandibular anterior phrenectomies. You can also have phrenectomies or phrenum in the maxillary or mandibular bicuspid cuspid area. Now, an additional area for phren uh, phrenum is the lingual of the tongue and that can cause ankyloglossia. This is something that should be checked on all young people, on children. Have the patient stick their tongue out and try to touch their nose. Now if they have ankyloglossia, that means the frenum on the underside of the tongue is short. And the patient, when the patient tries to touch their tongue, they'll go, uh, 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 and they can't get the tongue past the lower anterior teeth. So they should be able to stick the tongue out and many times touch their tongue. But if they're stuck right here, that can really be a, cause a speech impediment. I had a, a family member of mine that had been to many speech pathologists. They came in to see me for a dental issue and I always check this on children patients. And I said, stick your tongue out and try to touch your nose. And he went, uh, uh, uh. I said, can you stick it out any further? And he went, uh, uh, uh. So we cut the lingual frenum and he could speak perfectly, you know, with a little speech training. So be sure to check that on all young people. Just have the child try to stick their tongue out and touch their nose. And even if the, they don't have to be able to touch their nose, but the tongue should come out of the mouth. If it's stuck like that, they've got ankyloglossia and it can cause a speech impediment. Typically, the phrenectomies that are performed are maxillary anterior between the centrals and mandibular anterior between the central incisors. Many times the central incisors are separated and this frenum comes down between the central incisors. I've videoed some other phrenectomies that will be posted within the next months that had a frenum coming down between the central incisors. It's very important that you m remove that piece of tissue so the teeth can be pulled together. The other thing the frenum can do is pull the gingival line and cause a gingival line discrepancy and actually root exposure of the tooth just from the tug. That really happens a lot in the lower anterior region. So I'm gonna show you a very good technique for a phrenectomy. I learned this in my oral surgery fellowship under Dr. D. Lamar Bird at Baylor College of Dentistry back in the day. I was in that fellowship for two years and this is one of the many surgical procedures that have been invaluable through the years. So phrenectomy is not just cutting the frenum, you must do it in a certain way. This topical anesthesia, you can see this patient is in orthodontic treatment. Very important to give painless and profound local anesthesia. Now you don't just cut the frenum. You take curved hemostats and put the round part on the bottom and clip that and then take another curved hemostat and put the round part toward the nose and clip it so that the tips of the curved hemostats touch together like this and the frenum's in here. And so you want the tips of the curved hemostats to touch and then it makes the surgical procedure very simple, very, very calculated. So you cut, just keep the Bard Parker blade touching the top curved hemostat all the way to the tip and then you do the same thing on the bottom. Have it touch the bottom of the curved hemostat and just remove the rest of that piece. So you have a wedge and you have a piece that's removed. This is how you do a phrenectomy, the initial part. So you just connect those, the tips of the hemostats tell you where to go. Then that comes out, block that, and then you also, then you want to suture there. Now if you had any tissue remaining in this area, you'd make a wedge and I'll show you in some other videos that'll be in the library of dentistry master classes how you do that. So you just suture that together 
It's 3-0 gut. Take a big bite when you're suturing. Don't just take a little bite or it'll pull through. But take a big bite and I like to go one, two, pull, one toward me, pull, one away from me, pull. Now if it's 4-0, a lot of times I'll go one, two, three, pull, one toward me, pull, one away from me, pull. See, now I'm going to come back and cut this piece between the teeth. Just make a wedge. You won't be able to suture that very well because that's attached gingiva, keratinized gingiva. That tissue is not going to approximate, but I want it, I want it as snug as it can get just for hemostasis. So sometimes you'll see the patient before ortho and there'll be a big piece of tissue between the teeth and you want to remove that before the ortho. This patient we did it after the ortho. So that's post-surgical. So this is two weeks later. You can see how well that's healed. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Are you feeling stuck? You know you have more to offer and you can elevate higher in your dentistry practice, but you just don't know how to do it. Well, great news. DentistryMasterclasses.com is here for you. At DentistryMasterclasses.com, Dr. Kepworth is offering his greatest work and his best cases. Here's everything included when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. You will get incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos, an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos, and the Dentistry Masterclasses, comprehensive cases for study and reference. You will get before and after pictures of Dr. Kepper's fantastic restored cases. And guess what? All of this is 40 bucks a month. That's right, 40 bucks a month. This is an opportunity you cannot miss. Go to DentistryMasterclasses.com and subscribe today.